Alrighty guys, welcome back uh, to the second part of our Pokemon uh, finale, so to speak. I don't know what you want to call it, but uh, it's kind of like a finale to a Nuzlocke that wasn't a Nuzlocke in the end, but it's still kind of cool to look at. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling here. The long story short is I've done a lot of training, a lot of soul searching, and a lot of changes to the team. So I hope you're looking forward to seeing the second half of our, um, of our battle with the Elite Four and Cynthia. Now, uh, first off, levels are higher. That's that's the great thing to know. Um, rock Candy pretty much hasn't changed. Uh, Ghost Pepper now has Rock Slide. Now, Rock Slide is going to be primarily used to take out the bug team um, of Aaron, I believe his name is, in the, the first stage of the Elite Four. Um, it's useful, but prone to missing. Uh, Boba T is exact same. Nothing's changed. I don't believe anything's changed. If something has changed, I will comment in post um i am recording this a fair amount of time after actually playing it uh, apologies for that uh spirit room is just higher leveled again nothing has really changed here um spirit room honestly just needed levels um and spirit room is pretty useful later on in the elite four uh benedict the blissey has changed the most um we have yeeted out a few of these moves we now have grass knot and flamethrower now Grass Knot is primarily going to be used to take out the ground gym leader. Flamethrower is a backup just in case um, Ghost Pepper, the, um, the the Drapion, can't take out the bugs. Uh, Honeycomb, also complete overhaul. Aerial Ace, X Scizor, plenty of levels. Um, its attack isn't as high as its special attack, but I do believe these more powerful moves will allow Honeycomb to kick some serious butt, or at least I did. Uh, and believe it or not, I, I don't think I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure Honeycomb is also very pivotal to the following fights. Uh, now, just a few things in regards to the items. I've been made aware that the Adamant Orb on Rock Candy is actually doing nothing. So I do apologize for that. Um, same with the um, whatever Boba T is holding. I can't remember the name right now. It also doesn't actually help Boba T. It only works on the Pokemon it's designed for. Um, but honestly, these are... It's minor, minor things that really don't impact the run to the to any major degree. I uh, finally decide on giving Spirit Tomb the spell tag. I take a long time debating this, but I do eventually give it to him. Um, and then I give uh, Honeycomb five rare candies to increase its level to level 70. Um, which again, I think does come into play later on in terms of damage values and, and damage ranges, that is. Um, but I'm going to skip ahead here because I muck around with items for ages. I just want to get into it, so let's just get into it. Alright, so... I do believe... Yeah, here we go. So I'm going to save the game now. Remember, I don't really want to um, save in between Elite Four members. I just want to save in front of Cynthia. Okay, so here we go. It is the rematch to end all rematches. Aussie Devfro versus Aaron. Aaron, you're a bug type trainer. I love you, but it's time for you to lose. Um, I'm here to win and I'm not taking any prisoners. This is gonna be an absolute bloodbath. So Aaron, prepare your team. I've prepared mine. Let's do this. All right, so we get in here. Um, and Elite Four Aaron, in all his glory, let's do this. Dust Dox coming out first. We know this Dust Dox. It's annoying. It heals. It poisons. It does the whole shebang. But Ghost Pepper is back and knows Rock Slide. The Rock Slide does come out. We get the hit, not the miss, which is exactly what we want. Does over half damage. We're happy with that. We're very happy with that. Light Screen doesn't really affect um, melee moves. We don't need to worry too much about that Light Screen really isn't going to be too much of a problem for us. Um, everybody heals with some Black Sludge, but then the Rock Slide comes out again, takes out the Dust Ox, and that's the end of the first Pokemon. Much easier than last time, I think we'd all agree. <laughs> um, so, Heracross is coming out. Now, that's why we have Honeycomb leveled up. Now, I leveled, out honey leveled up Honeycomb specifically to be able to tank a Rock Slide or a Stone Edge, I believe, from this Heracross. So let's see if that works out for me. Honeycomb getting that pressure. Not really going to have too much of an effect throughout the battles, but here comes the Aerial Ace. Much stronger than Gust, but the Rock Slide doesn't do enough. Super effective, but Aerial Ace is four times effective, my friend. That's a very, very fainted Heracross, which is exactly what we're looking for. One shot, one kill. Vesper Queen is coming out next. Now, Vesper Queen is four times weak to rocks, so we're going to go back into the Drapion. Going to get that Rock Slide out. Going to hopefully hit and, um, and not uh, whiff on that one. So, 
as you can see here, I thought, I was at the time, I, I'm one-shotting things, I'm two-shotting things, I'm thinking I've overleveled. Um, don't worry, I haven't overleveled. <laughs> Case in point, the Vesper Queen lives. It needs a berry. Now, it's back up to half health, but that's not going to be a huge issue because it's taking it out of heal range. And it goes to the defend order. Um, again, the defense buff plus the Citrus Berry shouldn't prove too much of an issue for our Drapion as long as the Rock Slide connects, which it does. We have been extremely lucky with these Rock Slides. Um, we only need to get a few more in, and then we don't have to worry about Rock Slide for the rest of the, um, for the rest of the battle. So that's, that's great. The light screen wears off. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter at all. Um, so, beautiful light. Again, four times weak to Rock. Let's get that in there. Rock Slide connects. Um, now, if any of my um, commentary has been false, like calling Sudowoodo a rock fighting or whatever I did before in the last episode, I apologize. I, I, I don't know what I'm talking about 99% of the time. These videos are intended for entertainment, not for learning. Um, so I hope you guys do understand that. I, I make mistakes, everyone makes mistakes, but I'm here to have a good time. Uh, not a correct time? Question mark? Anyway, it's Drapion v Drapion. The, and, and I notice here, look, my, my um, Night Slash is gone. Nani? Where's my Night Slash gone? A little, a little confusing, but anyway, doesn't matter. I go for the Screech, Earthquake comes out. Earthquake is not strong. Drapion's not a ground type. It may be super effective, but doesn't really affect me. Speaking of not being effective, the Screech misses, which I'm infuriating about. So I'm just going to go for another Screech. Um, another Earthquake comes out. Oh, I forgot. I, repl I think I replaced Night Slash with Crunch. I can't remember if I did that in between the, the videos or not, but it was Crunch, crunch not Night Slash, that I, that I was missing there. Anyway, the Screech connects, um, we gain a bit of Black Sludge healing, which is nice, and I'm hoping now I'm going to be able to just rip through them with some more Rocks um, slides, just to sort of use up the PP. Unfortunately, Ghost Pepper does go down, but that's okay, I have a, another idea here. I don't mind losing Ghost Pepper, because Bobber T comes is going to come out, and my intention is to just one-shot it. Um, with the defense lowering, uh, plus the superpower, or the... the, the huge strength or whatever it is that um, Azumarill gets doubling its attack just goes to the waterfall it's an insta give it's done and like that Aaron's defeated like that's that it was it was as easy as that honestly um we had so much trouble the first time with Aaron and this time we only lost Drapion and the reason we lost him is because I kind of intentionally wanted the um the death switch I didn't want to switch into a uh, into an attack so we're just going to do a quick revive. We're going to heal up Honeycomb and Ghost Pepper. And, um, yeah, we're going to get on to the next battle. All right. So, we're back here. I'm just going to double check the order of my team. We're going to get that Grass Knot user, Benedict, the Blissey, out in front. That's where our true power is going to be. All right, Bertha. You don't have anything for us. I'm done with Bertha. Bertha's Quagsire can go jump in a lake for all I'm concerned. Let's do this. Alright, so Elite Four Bertha would like to fight the Quagsire. Here it is, the man, the myth, the legend, the dead man walking Quagsire. Because I don't know if you guys have seen a Grass Knot, but Grass Knot, it's pretty effective. Yeah, Blissey doesn't have the highest attack, but it does the job. It does the job incredibly well. Okay, so after that very, very easy win, the Pseudo Wudo's coming out. The just rock type Pseudo Wudo. Um, I switch into Bobber T because I figure a quick little waterfall will wipe out Pseudo Wudo nice and easy. Um, and, um, and I believe I actually go for the Superpower, which, uh, there you go, I got egg on my face. Superpower wipes out the Pseudo Wudo nice and easy. Lowers, um, Azumaro's attack uh, and defense, but that's okay because I'm pretty sure that we're going to do a, a bit of a swap here. And, um... And that won't be too much of an issue just to reset our stats there. Because, yeah, the Whiskash is coming out now. I remember what happens here. Um, and we're going to send out Benedict. Now, Whiskash is a little bit of a tricky Pokemon. Because while its attacks are kind of meh, uh, it has its defenses covered. Because it's a groundwater like Quagsire, four times weak to grass. Um, but it's covered by a berry. Now, you do have to apologize there. I believe there was a, uh, a, a cut there. Um, I ran out of space on my hard drive. Um, but yes, here comes the Grass Knot, um, and there goes the defensive berry protecting from grass attacks. So this Whiskash is going to survive very handily from the four times effective Grass Knot. That's okay, the Bulldozer is going to come out. It's not going to be an issue. Blissey has so much health. Did I mention I've geared this Blissey to make sure it can tank a Garchomp? Yeah, we'll get to that later, by the way. 
Um, second Grass Knot comes out, doesn't finish off the Whiskash, but again, Bliss is not designed to kill, Bliss is designed to tank. Yes, its defenses are low, but its health do be massive. Um, here comes a full restore on the Whiskash, but I don't honestly see a problem with this. These Grass Knots are designed to be used up in this fight, so I don't mind if it's going to take an extra two. That's totally fine. Totally fine with me. Um, Whiskash comes out with an Ice Beam. I hadn't seen that before. That's kind of weird. Uh, maybe like a last-ditch effort, uh, but there you go. There's the Grass Knot. Whiskash goes down, and that is a, a, a slightly longer win, but an easy win nonetheless. Um, Blissey is totally fine. And even then, a quick heal will finish that up nicely. Anywho, we switch back into Boba T to take out the Golem. Um, I'm looking at this and I go, hey, you know, Golem's special defense probably is, you know, worse than its physical defense. Um, don't quote me on that. So I figure, let's get in there and, um, and let's use a strength. Wait, why am I talking about special defense? All of Boba T's attacks are physical attacks. Oh my, I'm really making the mistakes here. So I go for the strength because I want to pop Golem sturdy. I don't want to use the, the waterfall um, end up knocking it to 1 HP and then having Bertha use a full restore. So I go for the strength. Um, it uses a rock polish and then an earthquake. Again, that's okay though. Boba T can tank that. Out comes the waterfall and that finishes off the golem, getting around that sturdy ability once again. The Hippowdon um, is a little spooky. A little spooky. Um, the Hippowdon, he looks intimidating. He whips up the sand stream. Um, but we're just going to keep pumping out those waterfalls. Um, and I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a spicy waterfall. Um, the Earthquake comes out, obviously. Um, Earthquake says we mo the majority of the attacks we tank from um, most of these Pokemon in the Elite Four. Uh, honestly, like, I think every Elite Four member has an Earthquake Pokemon. Like, what the heck? <laughs> anyway, Full Restore comes out on the Power Down. That's expected. That's okay. We're just going to have to tank out these, these Earthquakes and, and Full Restores. Um, we did a bit more damage this time, which is really nice. Um, thank you, Damage Rangers. And um, I'm going to also go for the full restore. I'm a little, I'm a little hesitant. I, I thought Bertha had another one, and um, I, I think I'm mistaken because it just goes straight for another earthquake. So I should have uh, gone for the uh, gone for the, uh, the the waterfall, but that's okay. We just um, we'll just uh, tank another earthquake and then hit that big blue button and finish off the hip out on. And uh, and like that, we are officially further than we are on our first run through the Elite Four because that is Bertha defeated uh which is fantastic um she admits defeat she says it's impressive i say it was easy i uh you know disregard her entirely because uh honestly that quags i can go jump in a lake of fire not a not a lake of water you'd probably enjoy that um but yes yeah, so we're getting a bit more uh potion mucking around but i will uh, cut that straight to the next trainer because we're gonna stick with the action right now okay so it is flint the fire elite four member um, a man after my own heart, looking like a, a fire version of me here, but that's not going to help him, because we're going to take him down. Um, Azumarill is at the front of the party, as we saw, I, I think I changed up earlier, if not I cut through it, but Azumarill is at the front. Rapidash comes out first, um, but Flint's going to learn very quickly, you don't mess with a Boba T. Boba T going to get you, because um, it's delicious and we all need Boba T. Um, Boba T avoids the Hypnosis, thankfully. That's a good start to the battle. Waterfall comes out, takes down the Rapid Dash, a quick smart. So that's a nice, easy um, uh, win on the Rapid Dash. It does get the Flame Body, though, unfortunately, which lowers Boba T's uh, attack, which is really painful, honestly. Um, it, Boba T still has amazing attack, but it, it has been rustled. The Jimmies have been rustled. That's an old meme. Holy heck. Speaking of old memes, here's a Steelix. I'm going to hit it with another Waterfall. Uh, not as powerful as I would like, um, that, um, burn hits, uh, our attack power much more than I would like to admit. I'm um, going for the Fire Fang here, I don't understand, um, but Azumara does break that burn, uh, which allows us to now get a full-powered Waterfall on the Steelix, which, as you can see right there, is a huge damage difference. I didn't know burn changed up your attack power that much, but that was, that was huge. Anywho, Lock Bunny coming out now. Lock Bunny's not going to be a bit of an issue because that's why Azumarill continues to have superpower. Fire Bunch is going to come through. It doesn't get the burn, thankfully. It was a critical hit, but disregard the critical hit. It's totally fine. Superpower comes through, knocks out the Lock Bunny. Again, we are ripping through these guys. Ripping through them. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about these Elite Four members. What is there to worry about? It's totally fine. Um, now, Driftlip. Speaking of worrying about it, um, I should have. 
because this Drifblin and Infernape combo is deadly. I bring out the Drapion, thinking of going Rock Slide, and then I make such a huge error, I have Crunch. Why do I not use Crunch? Crunch is Stab, first of all, gets a Stab bonus, and it's still super effective against Drifblin. I should have gone Crunch. Um, the Rock Slide connects after Drifblin uses Minimize. I reckon using a Crunch there might have gotten it a bit lower, might have knocked it into healing range, and this fight would have been completely different. Um, instead, I realize my mistake now, go for the Crunch, and we miss. This is where our problems start. Willow of the Wisp, I've sped up a lot faster now, because Willow Wisp comes in, we miss with the Crunch. Um, we go for it again, another Minimize, and of course, we miss with the Crunch. Um, we get hit by Burn, we heal using Black Sludge, another Minimize from the, um, the, the Drifblim, another Crunch, it misses. We heal the Burn, it's literally, look, look at these misses. Can I, I sped up the footage now, can you see these misses? It keeps going, and I am infuriated. Because now the Drifblim starts healing, which is mm, not the worst, but again, I hit with a Crunch, and it does like no damage. And I'm thinking, what the heck? Oh, I'm burned, that's right. And now the Drifblim finally batten passes into the Infernape. And I'm like, oh no, we need to knock out this Infernape that has maximum minimize on it. So I've got nothing. I can't hit the Infernape. I'm trying to use Cross Poisons, it's not doing anything. But the Infernape is making a big mistake of using close combat over and over again, lowering its attack power. So I figured Ghost Pepper can tank these close combats. So I keep Ghost Pepper out to tank them, we continuously lower the stats in the Infernape, and I'm just praying that this Infernape doesn't have another Baton Pass. Um, because we can't hit it, but if it can't do damage to me, then where's the problem? We just gotta wait for us to get it and attack it. So I pull out Honeycomb, and my thinking here is, F the fire attacks, Infernape's got no attack power, let's just go for an Aerolace that cannot miss. The Fire Punch comes out, it doesn't kill Honeycomb, the Aerial Ace comes out and it knocks out the Infernape. So while that did take a long time, trust me, that was three times speed on the footage by the way, um, that took me like 40 minutes just for this fight. Um, I, it was terrible, it was just terrible. But we're through it and that's what matters. Anyway, Infernape's down, I send out Rock Candy, Flint's gonna bring out the Drift Blend again and, and start setting up those um, those uh, minimizers. I don't really care for that because I'm just gonna start going for flash cannons. Uh, we, he's gonna hit us with a Will-O-Wisp. Doesn't mean a thing to Rock Candy. Rock Candy's a special attacker. So this flash cannon comes out and it hits hard enough. Only one more flash cannon should do it. It's within damage range, I assume. Um, and as long as Flint doesn't heal, we're okay. But I do decide to go for the Quiver Dance. Um, why? I don't know. Maybe I get panicky, but then I remember, oh wait, the Drifling can minimize, so why why would I do this? Like, this this seems silly. Um, but then I also remember that the Drifling can't really hurt us. A, a burn is not going to hurt us. The weird healing attack it has isn't going to hurt us, so I just go for the Flash Cannon, um, and we should be okay here. Multiple minimizers, we're just going to get a single hit. That's all we're waiting for, a single hit with the Flash Cannon, which happens straight away. Um, so that's the Drifling down. That Drifling Infernape combo, Get it out of here. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I forgot it existed and I hated it every second of it. Doesn't matter. We won, Flint's defeated, and we are on to the next trainer, which I'm very, very happy about. Um, so Flint, Flint doesn't want to say much to us because he's upset his spaghetti. Uh, that's okay. Don't, don't pull your hair out over it. We're going to do some heals. I'm going to rearrange the party and I will see you when we get into the next battle. Now. It is uh, the Psychic type Elite Four member. I forget their name because I can only remember Will from um, from Generation 2 um, with these Zatus. This isn't Will. This is Lucian. Lucian. Now, I, um, I had a plan here. I had a really detailed plan. It was a great plan. And honestly, I think there was nothing wrong with the plan. However, I didn't factor in my execution of said plan, and we all know there are runtime errors, okay? Uh, I make a big freaking boo-boo here, but that's... I digress. It's not here yet. Anyway, my plan is... Uh, Mr. Mun can't hurt Rock Candy. So I'm gonna set up all of my Quiver Dances right now. Every single Quiver Dance I'm gonna set up now, 
and then I'm just gonna bug buzz my way through a psychic team and it's gonna be beautiful it's gonna be amazing so I'm gonna do another three times speed up here there's um there's light screens there's reflex um it doesn't matter we're just gonna quiver dance we're just gonna keep quiver dancing um the psychic comes out it does nothing I do not care yeah we had a special defense drop but it doesn't matter I just raise it again um another psychic comes through um thankfully no special defense drop here this is the final quiver dance so the footage has slowed back down again thankfully um and now I think Mr. Mime goes for another psychic it's desperately trying to get those special defense drops um but that's okay not a huge issue doesn't matter here comes the flash cannon because for some strange reason it's super effective I don't know what the typing combo is on Mr. Mime but anyway I'm shocked at how little damage it does but then I remember the light screen is still active um so that's okay light screen being active and we still two shot the Mr. Mime that's totally fine that's great it's brilliant now Landing the critical hit, yeah, it's cherry on top. So, I expect at this point onwards, we're gonna sweep this entire team. So here comes the Medicham, and here's my error. Medicham knows, I believe, high jump kick. So I come out with a flash cannon, does nice damage, let's not beat around the bush, but here comes high jump kick, which kills Rock Candy. So all my setup that I did in my previous, um, with the previous Pokemon was just to beat Mr. Mime. And I am furious. You have no idea how angry I was so happy I wasn't recording my audio for this because I was swearing like a freaking sailor. Anywho, I decide it's time for Spirit Tomb to have a bit of a go. So Spirit Tomb comes out, um, gets Ice Punch to the face, which is hard because how do you punch a ghost? Anywho, we get a nasty plot going, and I think, oh yeah, nasty plot should be alright. The light screen is off, so let's just go for a Shadow Ball. Out comes the full restore um, from Lucian. It's kind of a wise play. I'd be, you know, let's, let's be real with that. Um, the Shadow Ball, this slow, ghosty ball, insta-kills the Metacham. So, has a good try, Lucian, but nothing stopping this Shadow Ball now. Um, except possibly a Giraffe Rig, which uh, I believe still has its normal typing. I, I could be wrong on that one. I, my Pokemon knowledge is is a little bit out but we go for the dark pulse a second light screen comes out which is unfortunate very unfortunate um i was enjoying the bonus damage but anyway here comes the dark pulse it's over half health so i figured second dark pulse won't be an issue and then out comes the t-bolt doesn't do too much um super tomb has decent defenses and the dark pulse uh, takes out the giraffe ring we've got a bit of a sweep going with um with um spirit tomb um much faster might I add than with my uh with my rock candy my wormadam so I'm a little upset that my wormadam play didn't work out here now I figure I can um I can tank whatever a Kadabra has oh, sorry an Alakazam has uh as long as Spiritomb is full health so I heal up to full health um Shockwave comes out and um yeah doesn't really do much at all so I figure you know what let's just keep going let's get the um the shadow ball out there but then Lucian starts setting up nasty plots, and this is where things get a little spooky again. A little spooky. The little slow-moving ghost ball doesn't knock out the Alakazam. And I'm thinking, uh-oh. So I'm thinking, oh, you know what, I'll just go for another nasty plot. Probably not the best play here, because the Alakazam is faster than me. So I went for another nasty plot, thinking, oh yeah, I can start uh, sweeping now. And then the Alakazam has decided to um, cause me some pain. The nasty plotted Alakazam is way too strong. Way too strong. Out comes another shockwave. And I'm thinking that's half health. Pray for the damage range. Pray for the damage range, and it's not there. Spirit Tomb goes down due to my mistake. I should have um, I should have just taken out the Alakazam. Anywho, we still have um, a few Pokemon in here. Now, the newly level 71 Honeycomb, I figure, is neutral against the uh, against the Alakazam, but with X Scissor, which is super effective. So, um, I send out Vesper Queen, and um, th again, thanks to all those rare candies, I think, allow Vesper Queen to deal damage and tank enough damage to be very pivotal in a few matchups that I make mistakes in. Um, Vesper Queen was very neutral to a lot of the Elite Four, which was really awesome. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I'd go for the switch here with Bronzong because um, Bronzong is just a weird Pokemon. The Steel Psychic um, element typing is very odd. It's very hard to predict like a, what you want to do against it. I, I feel like, in retrospect, I should have gone to Fablissi and Flamethrower um, because 
not only would Bronzong's special defense be a little bit less, but um, steel typing. Um, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, the crunch does perfect amount of damage, gets him to use the berry, doesn't get the, um, the, the super potion or the hyper potion in there, which is great. We go for another crunch. We then have to tank an earthquake, which hurts. We ain't, we ain't tanking multiple earthquakes from this Bronzong. It is very strong. Um, but we don't need to because the second crunch will very happily take it down. And that is the end of Lucian. Nice and easy win there. Um, and uh, that's the Elite Four. We we did it. We actually were able to defeat the Elite Four. I'm I'm ecstatic. I'm actually ecstatic. Uh, when we did it pretty easy, like most of the losses on our side were due to mistakes that I made. So um, yeah, I'm feeling pretty confident. Um, time for that confidence to get a foot up the ass. I'll see you. I'll see you at the climax. Okay, here we go. Now I do want to quickly rearrange my team here. I know Cynthia always starts off with her Spirit Tomb, and I'm thinking, you know what would be fun? Spirit Tomb has no weaknesses, so um, let's uh, let's see what we can do here. What can tank a Spirit Tomb easiest? And you know what? It's actually kind of funny. Spirit Tomb can tank Spirit Tomb the best. So um, I'm going to swap, and I'm going to have a Spirit Tomb minute mirror match, and I think it's going to be a good time. At least that's what I'm thinking right now. Uh, I do save the game here because if I do lose against Cynthia, I do want to just sort of head back into her. Um, I figure that's going to be the best go here. Now, uh, this battle, I believe, is at regular speed with its all with its um, default music in here. So I didn't speed any, up, any of this footage up because I thought, you know, give Re Cynthia the respect that she commands. Uh, Yas Queen. Here we go. She accepts my challenge. Let's get in there. We don't want to miss a single second of this fight. Here we go. Spirit Tomb v Spirit Tomb. Get your bets in now. Just kidding. Don't bet. Don't bet on it. Please don't. <laughs> um, because we all know how I'm gonna, how I can stuff up my plays. So both Spirit Tombs have pressure, so that is something to be aware of. And I think you know what? Let's start off with a with the right go. Let's go for the nasty block. Now the Nast Plot comes out, buffs our special attack to High Heaven, and I figure, I wonder if she's going to do the same. I wonder if she's going to do the same. She doesn't, she goes straight for the Dark Pulse. Now, that doesn't do much. That doesn't do much. So I'm thinking, hey, I should keep setting up here. I can tank another Dark Pulse and then um, heal up and then hit back twice as hard. So I'm thinking this is the right play. Second Dark Pulse comes out. And we survive, exactly as I predicted. So I go for the heal now. We max potion up our spirit tomb. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hiding anything. We're, we're going max potions of full restores this time. No super potions here, no hyper potions either. Another dark pulse comes out. Doesn't do enough damage. So I figure, okay, excellent. Let's just hit him back. Hit him back with that shadow ball. I got the spell tag um, and it's stabs. So this should do a fair bit of damage. And it does a lot. It doesn't do enough, though. We do get the special defense drop, so even if Cynthia healed the Spirit Tomb using a full restore, I still believe we would knock it out on the next fight. Um, but here comes a Shadow Ball from the opposing Spirit Tomb, and it almost kills. It does lower special defense, though, so now we're both at this point of we both need to heal, which is a bit of a problem. I get another Max Potion out because I'm thinking this Spirit Tomb still has two Nasty pl Plots on it. That's really handy. That's super handy. Dark Pulse comes out from the enemy, and it does a lot of damage. And I'm thinking, wait, are they faster than me? No, they're not. Thankfully, I am the higher level, I'm faster. The Shadow Ball comes out, knocks out the Spirit Tomb, and that is 1-0 to me. And I figure, even if Spirit Tomb goes down on the next Pokemon, we still had the moral victory. We still got First Blood. So I keep Spirit Tomb in against the Roserade. I figure it must have something against me if she's going into it, but um, I keep out. I go for the Shadow Ball just to get some damage in. Uh, Dazzling Gleam. Uh, it's certainly not something I expected from the Rose Raid. Certainly not expecting it to be super effective either. Um, but that's okay. Again, it was the moral victory of the First Blood. Cynthia is quaking in her very high heel booties. I don't know. Anyway, Vesper Queen comes out. I figure a bug flying against a grass type. We got this in the bag. We got this in the bag. Aerial Lace for the win. Out comes a Sludge Bomb. It's, it's a decently strong Sludge Bomb. 
which also gets the poison. Now that is unfortunate, because that poison is going to do a bit of chip over, uh, as we go. Um, that's the, the aerial ace, love the aerial ace, uh, and now um, Cynthia has a decision to make. She can either heal the Roserade or attempt to get the kill on me, goes for the heal. And you know what, I'm okay with this, I'm okay with this, because it means I can get another aerial ace in. What I do forget, however, is that now I'm within range of the Sludge Bomb, I believe. Um, no, I'm not. I expelled the poison. Never mind. I was about to cast some Doom and Gloom. No need. No need on that. We go for the Aerial Ace. Right? No? Yes? Yes, we go for the Aerial Ace. Um, the Sludge Bomb comes out and it gets a crit. If there's one thing Cynthia does not need, it's crits. Seriously. Why can the champion crit? Anyway, I figure, all right, let's uh, let's set up um, our second sweeper. Let's see if we can sweep Cynthia with a bug, and then I have bragging rights over literally every single person who's told me bug types suck. Um, so I bring out Wormadan, Rock Candy herself. We tank that Shadow Ball like a mother flippin' boss. We get the Quiver Dance up, and I think you guys know what time it is. It's time. It's time to start dancing. So... Here comes another Quiver Dance. Another Shadow Ball is going to come through, but it shouldn't do enough damage. Um, because we're raising our special defense as we go here. So that's the second Quiver Dance. That's fine. Now, I can't speed up this footage without speeding up the music as well. So we're just going to have to, you know, watch these Quiver Dances. And watch as this Roserade creep closer and closer to potentially critting my Wormadam to death. Um... We get the special defense drop there, but that's, again, we're, we're raising it as we go, so that's that's not an issue at all. Um, but yeah, if, if she's crit once, I'm, I'm scared she can crit again, but this is these are the risks you need to take against Cynthia. Um, she hits hard, and she doesn't play around. You've got to take risks. If you don't take risks, then you've got to over-level out-level her, and I didn't really want to out-level her too much um, anyway. Um, I figured the levels are, I'm at is quite nice. Anywho. Another Shadow Ball, and I believe, do I, yeah, at this point I'm thinking, alright, I think that's enough. I think we've done uh, enough uh, Quiver Dancing for now, and I think it's time to start smacking back. I do use the Hyper Potion, I don't know why, um, I, I, a bit of a, a flub there, I mixed, uh, mixed up my potions. Um, another Shadow Ball does almost nothing, and, um, and, and you know what, it's time to fight back. We go for the Psychic. Here we go, Rose Raid. You were a good setup opponent, thank you. So that's one Pokemon, in fact, sorry, that's, uh, that's two Pokemon? No, one Pokemon, uh, defeated by bugs. So, Cynthia, it's two, one, and I got the bug in the field. Show us your next move. Show us your next move. Oh, it's a Gastrodon. It's a, it's a Gastrodon. It's a nice Gastrodon. Um, I'm just gonna go straight for the bug buzz. It's Stab. We've got the Quiver Dancers. And it's beautiful. It's an almost one-hit KO. Plus the special defense drop. It's great. The Rock Tomb comes through, but um, Wormadam physical attack, uh, physical defense, very tanky. This feat falls, but again, we have the Quiver Dances. We're fine. Gastrodon's leftovers healing it up, I think, out of full restore range, which allows Wormadam to get another Bug Buzz, which is two Pokemon killed on Cynthia to Bug Pokemon. I call that a sweep. I call this, this is a bit of a sweep. And I'm thinking, oh, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop my hands up. I'm gonna kick my feet out, and I'm just gonna chill. This is, this is not a problem. Um, I think, oh, a Lucario. Ooh, it does have fighting type attacks. This could be a problem. But I'm, I'm set up, and my speed is high. I can just hit it with a Psychic. Um, so yeah, we just go straight for the Psychic. I know it's only effective, but it's faster. I could not believe it was faster with the amount of Quiver Dances I had. Um, but then I, I did forget the, uh, the. The, the, the um, Rock Tomb earlier as well. Anyway, Lucario does a nasty plot, and it is very, very powerful, but it is not enough. Um, we get the special defense drop, we get the psychic, somehow we're faster this time, we must have been speed tying, um, and we defeat a third Pokemon with Wormadam, and I'm cheering in my chair at this point, because we are sweeping one of the strongest champions in all of Pokemon's history with a bug. If this doesn't prove bug type superiority i don't know what does you know what does prove me wrong though a melodic we go out with the bug buzz it does over half i'm thinking there's a two shot coming here except for miracoat miracoat that's right 
I got defeated by myself. Cynthia was too, so scared of Wormadam, she decided that the only way to defeat Wormadam was to have it defeat itself. So I still take that as a victory. Anyway, I'm still holding my head held high. We defeated three Pokemon with Wormadam. That's a bug sweep, and I'm happy with it. Anywho, Drapion comes out. The Melodic is burned. Uh, it has Recover, which is really unfortunate, because I need to figure out a way to tank... Well, not tank, but like, it's very tanky, sorry. I need to figure out a way to get its damage down without it recovering. Um, so the best way to do that is to lower the defense. Uh, Ghost Pepper's got a Screech once or twice. Um, I need to be able to take out over half health in one hit. So there's the um, the harsh drop on the, on the defense. Here's a second recover. That's great. I'm actually happy for that because that means I get another free turn for a second Screech. I'm pretty sure I do go for a second Screech here. I wanna, I want, I'm leaving nothing to chance with the Cynthia fight. Never mind, I'm leaving everything to chance with the Cynthia fight. We go for the Cross Poison. I'm looking for a crit. It's nowhere near enough damage. I don't see, this is what I'm thinking. I'm like, what am I thinking? I gotta, I gotta get a second um, Screech on. We can tank those skull, Skulls though, thankfully. Um, so that's not too bad. Uh, the burn comes through. Still not enough damage. We gotta, we gotta do a bit more. We gotta do a bit more. So here comes the second Screech. Uh, we thankfully get it off. I, I'm getting a bit of luck here. Screech is notoriously hard to hit with. Uh, but we should be okay with that second drop. I'm thinking we have enough damage now. Another scold. It's not a crit, thankfully. And I figure, you know what? With a good heal, uh, I think I can I can keep going. Um. So. Yeah, here comes the heal. I was just I was just wondering for a second. I couldn't remember if I went for the heal or did I send out Boba T to um essentially just uh play rough it and and to finish it off but that's okay we go we go with the full restore here comes another scold that's a powerful scold if we got burnt there i would have been in a lot of trouble um but that's okay there's the other burn tick chip damage from the from the melodic and here comes the cross poison stab two screeches come on it's enough it's enough it's a crit as well Thank you, Drapion. Wonderful time with those crits. Okay. I do believe there's only one Pokemon left. We all know which one it is. It's the Garchomp. And we all know what I need to do against the Garchomp. I need to put Blissey out, which I don't do. I built an entire Blissey purely to tank Garchomp and kill a Garchomp, and I send out Bobber T biggest whiff ever so i think you know what let's just go for a waterfall just go for a waterfall second biggest whiff boba t has a fairy type move fairy is super effective against dragon these are mistakes these are huge mistakes and i can't believe i'm at the end of the entire pokemon brilliant diamond journey and i'm making such bad mistakes because boba t doesn't get a second shot here boba t had one attack one shot and i didn't use the, the the much stronger move all right never mind time to rectify those mistakes here comes the blissey this is what blissey was brought on the team to do ice beam versus earthquake here we go tanks it like a champ we we come back with the ice beam garchomp has that berry that protects against ice moves but garchomp and cynthia forgot one thing blissey is a freezing machine. Increase bonus of bonus effects. The freezes are, I think, twice as more likely with a Blissey. And this was the play. Here comes the second Ice Beam. Cynthia is forced to use the full restore. So I get a free Ice Beam. If this crits or it was within damage range, we can get the win here. It doesn't do it. But we get a second freeze! What the heck? We get a second freeze. So I'm thinking, F it, just keep ice beaming. Here's another full restore. I'm like, okay, three for three, three for three. Come on, crit, damage range, or a third freeze. Just give me one of these three and we are golden. We get none of them. So now we're in the end game. I don't know what to do. This is the scary part, and I'm, I'm looking, I'm thinking if I heal the Earthquake, I think Earthquake's in damage range, so I'm very scared of the Earthquake. I, I honestly thought we'd be able to tank the Garchomp better than that, but, and I look at what I've got here, right? 
And I look to myself, I'm like, if I can max revive Blissey and Garchomp, uh, sorry, Cynthia has no full restores left, then we can we can be in this. Now, I, I, I sort of need to test this. I sort of go for the max potion to see what Cynthia wants to do. And I confirm the theory, she's out of full restores. She's out of full restores. And, and that also shows the damage range on this earthquake. It is very close. So I figure best bet, let Blissey faint. Bring out Ghost Pemper. Max revive the Blissey to tank another earthquake. And then we go for the win. So here comes another earthquake from the Garchomp. We we tank it, that's okay. But we are literally coming down to the line here. It is one Pokemon left on each side. Ghost Pepper, I'm sorry. But you're here for one reason and one reason only. You are the distraction, my friend. Um, you've done so well, this Elite Four. But I need Blissey. More than ever at this point. So. Here comes the Earthquake. Ghost Pepper's gonna go down. Alright. All we need to do... It was a crit too, so if that had hit Blissey... <laughs> Alright, all we need to do now is tank the Earthquake. That's it. And we've done it many times, we just need to do it again. We tank the Earthquake. All we need to do now is hit with Ice Beam. Which of course we do. And that is that. Cynthia, the most powerful trainer. I would say the most powerful trainer ever. Defeated by an overly happy egg. Ha! Oh, what a battle. Like, not only did my bug sweep go off without a hitch, but then Blissey coming in with the double freeze to allow us to make Cynthia waste her four restores. What? What, a, what an ending. What an ending to that to that fight. I certainly couldn't believe it. But I'm thrilled. Um, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond was really fun to play through. The Nuzlocke on stream was really fun as well. Um, but um, yeah, I actually really enjoyed doing these videos uh, to finish it all off. I think if I was going to do this again, I'd probably do it like one battle per video rather than like, you know, the entire Elite Four in one go. Um, but that's for me to work out for next time if I decide to do it. Um, thank you everyone so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Here is your league champion and the Pokemon team that backed me up. Um, I hope you enjoyed the videos and I will uh, see you when I see you. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching the video today. Hope you had a good time. I know I sure did. Um, please do consider commenting below uh, parts of the video that you liked or didn't like. It helps me out when making future content. Also, please remember I am live on Twitch five nights a week, and you can find the link in the description below. Alrighty, have a good one guys.